Thank you, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is David Savadalinter, and I'm actually based in the UK. So today, I'm going to cover, the, in the next 45 minutes, uh, multi-language pipelines, OK? Let's move to the next slide. Um, I'm going to cover three sections. So first, I'm going to introduce the BIM portability, which is important in the, in the context of the, of the multi-language support. I'm, al I'm also going to cover the Dataflow Runner version 2. And then lastly, I'm going to introduce the multi-language support. And actually, I'm going to run a, a quick demo. OK? So first, let's go with the, with the BIM vision, right? Uh, the BIM vision provides a comprehensive portability framework for data processing pipelines, right? One that allows you to write your pipeline once in the programming language of your choice, for example, Java or Python or Go or SQL, and then run it in any runner, right? So any engine of your choice. If we see that in perspective of a particular um, functional uh, uh, action like a sample key, uh, on the one side, we have all the SDKs that we can choose, right? Uh, uh, as engineers or as a different type of personas, we'll want to use one of these SDKs typically, right? A Java, Python, Go, or SQL. Actually, within Python as well, you can use uh, data frames, which is a similar API to, uh, to the Pandas uh, data frame. So that's uh, a new addition as well to the family. Now, the context is that, and that's back to the vision, is that you pick up an SDK, and then you can you are able to implement one of these logics like the sample key, and then it will be automatically be able to uh, to be uh, executed in any of these uh, runners, right? So that gives you uh, no vendor locking. Obviously, uh, I'm from Google. I will always encourage you to deploy these pipelines in the Dataflow runner because it's a fully managed service. But you will always have the option to run it on any other runner, right? Um, and yeah, that's that's the point in this one. Now the challenge here is, uh, if you start thinking about okay, um, in Java SDK we have many functionality, right? So every single time that you want to implement that functionality in any of the other SDKs, you need to do the effort to actually implement the kind of the middle layer for each of them. Now the challenge is we have a lot of uh, functionality enabled already in Java, right? So every time there is a new functionality added in Java someone also needs to work on the equivalent ones for uh, uh, available on the other SDKs, right? And as you can imagine, as the number of um, SDKs grows and also the, the functionality that we are adding, that becomes a bit uh, challenging to actually scale the platform and make sure that all these functionalities are available in all the SDKs, right? So that's really why the the, um, the portability framework is um, it was actually uh, implemented as well as part of the framework, right? So it's a language agnostic um, implementation just to have uh, to be able to represent and execute uh, your BIM pipelines, right? It introduces a well-defined and language-neutral data structures and protocols between the SDKs and the runners, right? So it's kind of the middle layer that allows you to implement once and then being able to use across SDKs and across runners, which is important as we grow the, the, the functionality and also the number of SDKs, right? So apart from that, um, the, the interoperability layer is actually called uh, Portability API and enables you to use the language of your choice with the runner of your choice, right? Uh, ensuring that the SDKs and runners can work with each uh, other uniformly. So that is just really giving you that abstract view. At the same time, because we, we actually uh, provide uh, Docker containerization, you can actually customize your environment, which is really powerful. And, and actually give you more choices, as Emily mentioned before as well, with the, with the containers. So that's a, another value that the portability, portability framework brings to, to BIM, right? Um, so yeah, the, sorry, I'm just... Uh, the benefits of the portability are a few, right? So every runner works with every language, right? Uh, as I mentioned before. The next one is... Um, Containerization allows configurable hermetic worker environment with the containerization. And also you can have multiple language pipelines, which is actually the other uh, the other section I'm gonna cover, right? Uh, and it's actually uh, allowing you to run cross language transforms. Um, I, will I will explain later and you will see by, uh, with the demo what we mean by multi-language pipelines and then the cross language transforms. So basically it's, you you start with the, the multi-language pipeline and then you can double click on it and then you will have uh, transforms that you can use that are only available in in other languages right 
So SQL transform be an example. Uh, and, and all of this will bring you a faster delivery of new features available in, in the SDKs, right? Because with portability, every time a new functionality is added to support a language, it will be automatically available to uh, all the others, as I mentioned before. Uh, now let's let's move to the next uh, let's move to the next section right on on data flow runner version two. So I'm introducing that in the context of data flow because the demo I'm running and the features I'm I'm showing are related to data flow. Now the important thing here is that Beam portability is available in Flink uh, and Spark as runners, and in data flow is only available on Python. Uh, on Python SDK, right? And I will mention a bit more. Uh, I will introduce the 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 context on on this section. Um, the use of portability features mentioned earlier, you must use the the data flow runner version two in GCP, right? Um, and actually, this runner is more efficient and portable, and has an architecture that is based on the on the Beam portability framework that um, I just introduced. Um, also, at the same time, it supports multi-language pipelines and custom containers. Now, as of today, uh, 9th of April of uh, 2021, um, we support um, the multi-language only from the Python SDK. And for that, you need to enable that when you submit the, um, you submit the job. That's automatically available if it's a streaming job in Python. And you need to have also uh, a version greater than, I think, is 2.24 or something like that. So you need to ensure that these things are available uh, from the Python SDK, then you will be able to access the runner version two. From the Java SDK, it's still not available and we are working on it. And hopefully in the next few quarters, we should just have that available in, in, in data flow. But as I mentioned before, that's a specific for GCP data flow. Uh, all the other runners, they support the Python SDK and the Java SDK as well, right? Um, and there's more information here as well about the support and how to enable the, um, the new data flow runner version two, okay? Um, okay, that's all with the runner version two. And now what we what I'm gonna do is introduce the, the actual multi-language uh, transforms, okay? So um, with language agnostic representation of the pipelines and, and the possibility of uh, specify the environment of each operation, you are no longer limited to a single language, right? In a in a in a given pipeline, so portability makes it possible for you to run multiple languages uh, across uh, multiple SDKs and across multiple runners. So imagine the scenario where, for example, you are a data engineer, and then you are being asked to uh, obviously, let's say, uh, your SDK of choice is Java because that's on where you are coding all your logic. And then you are in charge of integrating with Kafka, right? Which is actually the, the example I'm gonna I'm gonna show. So actually, you implement uh, you have a Kafka I/O available in Java, so you can apply your specifics uh, to connect to your specific Kafka cluster to do uh, whatever uh, transforms you need to do to actually uh, encode your messages and decode your messages, uh, and then you finish there, right? Now the challenge is you are not the only persona building that pipeline, right? So this is your little part in the in the whole pipeline. There is then a data scientist that is actually more comfortable work implementing uh, the logic in Python, right? In the Python SDK. Now the challenge is historically the um, the way you had to implement that will be okay. I'm a Java. I'm a data engineer, so I will implement my part in Java, and because I cannot actually mix the languages, I will need to somehow transform the events and then push them in a place that another pipeline that is actually running Python SDK will pick up these events and, and do whatever the data scientist needs to do, right? Now with introduction, the introduction of cross-language transforms and, and the multi-language support, we can do all that within one pipeline, right? So you don't need to, uh, for example, push things from your Java part into PubSub or Kafka and then use another pipeline in Python that is picking up from there and applying that logic, right? So all can happen within the same pipeline, which is really powerful because as different personas, I can actually focus on preparing that Kafka IO section, wrapping that up uh, in a way that the data scientists from their side when they're building the, the with the Python SDK can actually grab that Kafka IO that was implemented in Java and use um, and use that directly without knowing even how it's implemented. It's all wrapped in a Python class that you can call instantiate and, and configure from the Python SDK, and you can then ingest from there, right? And the beauty of that is, 
as, uh, as we explained here is we have a rich set of IOs, right? As I've discussed, we have Kafka, we have uh, Papsa, we have a bunch of them. And at the same time, we have uh, a mix of um, libraries that we can bring. For example, uh, let's say the other way around, let's say that I'm a, I'm a debt engineer and I'm implementing a pipeline in Java. And for example, I want to use, or I need to use TensorFlow Extended, right? TensorFlow Extended is only available in Python. Same story, I will need to push the events in a, in a, in a, um, in a messaging queue, for example, and then implement another uh, pipeline in Python to extract the events from, from there and actually uh, compute them for Tensor, with TensorFlow Extended to do transformation of my uh, features and then apply whatever machine learning model I have, right? So that's a challenge. And again, here, what we can do with uh, the cross-language, uh, multi-language support is within the same pipeline, I can also mix Python and Java and, and also the future SDKs, right? So again, to go with an example, and that's actually the demo I'm gonna run, you can see here that it's, it's really easy to actually implement that. Uh, let's imagine now I'm the data scientist and I have my data engineer that uh, has created the Kafka IO and it's all wrapped uh, nicely in, in a class that I can actually import uh, from the, my Python SDK. And as you can see here from that uh, code uh, snippet, all I need to do is instantiate my pipeline. And then the first action is actually read, read from Kafka, right? And then I have some configuration parameters there that they can use that are exposed by, by that class on where I specify where are my, my Kafka brokers and then what is the topic that I need to read from, right? Again, you can see the amount of lines of codes and, and I don't really need to know how the, the Kafka IO is implemented in, in Java, right? And, and again, at the same time, I benefit because I have a really small uh, number of uh, lines of code because of the Python SDK. So again, as a data scientist, I'm happy. And then also the Java uh, data engineer is also happy because he has been able, she has been able to implement the, um, the IO efficiently in, in the uh, SDK of choice, which is Java, right? Now let's let's go under the hood. What is going on with uh, with that, right? Wh what happens when we mix? Uh, we have an SDK in this case, a Python SDK, and then we're trying to embed um, uh, stages that are actually uh, in a different SDK. In this case, Java using the Kafka I/O equivalent, right? Uh, under the hood, to make Java transforms available to to a data flow uh, Python pipeline, the Apache Beam Python SDK starts up a local Java service. That happens on, on your computer or in the case of the demo I'm gonna run, that happens in the in the Cloud Shell console, but it's not in the cluster, it actually happens locally, right? And what it's doing is uh, it creates and injects the appropriate Java pipeline fragments into the Python pipeline, right? So as you can see here in the image, in the image that's what we're trying to do. Um, the SDK then downloads and stages the necessary Java dependencies needed to execute these transforms, like together with the Python dependencies, right? Everything uh, in that stage when, for example, in this example I will run, that it will it will be submitted to the data flow service. So we'll see in the logs that actually we are staging all that in GCS buckets. So that, that's um, actually how it happens. The next step then obviously is at runtime, the data flow workers will execute the Python part, which is the main part, but at the same time, we'll actually bring all the Java code pieces to be able to uh, to be run uh, along the pipeline, right? So in this particular case, it will be the Kafka IO to be able to read data and to write data, okay? That's basically the, the, um, the story here. So now I'm gonna switch to demo. Uh, okay, let me stop sharing this tab and then switch to okay give me a sec mm. Okay, so you should be seeing now the, the GitHub repo and where there's a bit of description of the, the steps. As I described, what we are gonna do is, um, there is already a Kafka cluster I set up. I will show you from the console, but basically 
There are multiple ways. You can have a Kafka broker set up locally on your laptop. In my case, what I did is I went to the marketplace in Google Cloud. I not I instantiated with Deploy Manager a uh, single node uh, with all the things. It's open source, so I'm just paying for that VM that is hosting things, but it's all automated, right? And exposes the 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 the, the broker uh, IP and the port number, so I can actually directly connect. So that's the first thing. And the exercise, what it's doing is very easy. So we have a we have a, actually a, a public pub sub topic that is actually a gathering is described here. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, it's actually you can see here. Uh, what is the pub sub topic is doing is uh, capturing all uh, a continuous stream of uh, taxi events, right? So we have location and a number of other things. In this demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy uh, a pipeline that is going to read from the pub sub topic, okay? That is publicly available, like continuously generating events. So that's quite good for you if you want at any moment test your pipelines. That's uh, actually uh, a topic that you connect to and then start receiving events immediately. Uh, that pipeline is going to obviously uh, decode that in the right format and is going to write it into a Kafka topic, okay? In the in the local Kafka uh, broker I created, and then the same pipeline is going to read from that topic, and it's going to actually generate logs to show that it's doing the whole exercise, right? So I'm going to show uh, a running. I'm going to submit the job, and probably because it takes a couple of minutes to run, because it's about the time, uh, I will go through the logs and then I will show you how who actually is doing the, the execution, okay? So let me switch to a different tab now. Okay. Cool, so you should be seeing now my console. I need to reconnect here with the, the shell, the cloud shell. <clears throat> As you can see, Always Murphy is low in, in this scenario, so I run it a few times to have some some previous simulations, so we can actually I can actually show you. But let's try to actually run one, right? The brave on a Friday. It's actually six eighteen here in the UK. Okay, it takes a bit because it's provisioning. The instructions for to for you to do the this exercise they are all included as well in the in the repo. Now, I'm not trying to follow with you because you had to set up the Kafka broker and that takes a bit of time, right? So, but you can try that at home. the The instructions tell you to actually do it in a particular way with a uh, with a um, uh, set of scripts that are already in the repo. But you can also do it from marketplace or even install it locally on your laptop. There are multiple ways to have a, a Kafka broker. Okay, so we're here. I'm gonna start. I have always a, a cheat sheet here to avoid fat fingers live. So first thing, I set the right Python environment uh, to be able to run uh, with all the Beam dependencies that I were previously installed. Uh, I initialize a bunch of parameters then. Okay, basically I export the the GCP project location for or where I'm going to stage all the um, all the objects and uh, the artifacts before and while I'm submitting the job location where I'm going to run it the name of the job a number of workers that 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 number is because that um, it can be a bit of a backlog as well when we are consuming things so is to be able to consume this happily obviously I don't want to keep this job running forever because as uh, I write things into Kafka into the, my Kafka node, I will probably run out of space at some point in time, right? And the important bit is this one. This this is where actually my Kafka broker is sitting. As I mentioned, when I deploy that from the marketplace, uh, that was given to me. I can actually show you that quickly. If I go to when you deploy something from marketplace and it's based on deploy manager scripts, you can actually go to deploy manager and have a look at your deployments. And we have here Kafka one. And it's all, you see, it's all green, configured, happy days. And it's pointing here. It's telling me this is the actual IP from where I can actually connect to the to the broker, right? 
Um, and I can do a quick check here. That's working. Yeah, all is working. So next thing then is actually I'm going to the right location from the repo that they clone already. Okay. Then the last step is actually submitting the job. Before I submit the job, let's revisit first um, the code. Okay, important <laughs> because I shared before a, a small code snippet, but let's analyze a bit the code that I'm gonna submit here. So if I again switch into a different tab, sorry about all these points in between. It should be this one. Okay, you should be seeing my my Cloud Shell editor. Uh, here is just the only file I need to submit. And uh, you can see this is a Kafka taxi module and it's a Python module. So basically I have the, the typical main section where I'm setting a logger and then I'm capturing some arguments, right? This is the, the Kafka broker where I'm actually gonna write things that I'm reading from PubSub and then reading them, right? Let's see actually the logic to do that in, in, in Python, right? First, this method is uh, uh, getting the events and then uh, creating a nice log for me to see in, in the console, right? Or any, any syslog. But the actual pipeline is instantiated here with the options that we we uh, we provide uh, uh, as we submit the job. And then you can see here, first we do the read from PubSub. This is actually the piece that we are importing that this is not implemented in Python, right? This is actually a Python wrapper of or Kafka IO that is actually implemented in Java. Uh, in Java. Right, so uh, in this case, the my, me as persona, I'm, I'm a data scientist in this case, right? All I'm interested is read the events. Uh, I know the topic, and then I'm doing some transformation on the on the events, right? And then what I all I'm doing, obviously, I'm not gonna do too fancy stuff uh, as a data scientist. I'm just writing back to to Kafka, and then I'm introducing a window of I think it's fixed window of 15 seconds, right? Every every 15 seconds of events, I'm writing them back to to uh, to Kafka, so reading from pops up, uh, mapping, and then writing back to to Kafka, and then the next one is actually reading from Kafka as I mentioned, right? Again, same setup, and then the topic is the same, and all I'm doing is do applying a flat map and then applying the method that I just described above to then generate the nice logs, right? So that's basically what I'm, what I'm doing here with, uh, uh, it's an easy pipeline, but you can see that you can definitely evolve that pipeline um, and then implement your own logic, okay? So let's go back and then submit that job and see what happens. Okay, so I can go to Dataflow jobs. Okay, I don't see anything running here. So let me go to my cheat sheet. Okay, and then this is the whole command to run it. Uh, Python 3, because the Cloud Shell comes pre configured with Python 2, so you always need to ensure that you call it Python 3 to avoid problems in case you try using the same method as me with the Cloud Shell. And then obviously the runner is Dataflow runner. And this is the temporary location where we are staging the artifacts, my project, the region is central US one, number of workers, and also the, the name of the job. And important is the where my Kafka broker is, right? And the important bit is this one, right? As I mentioned before, uh, I need to run this in the runner version too. And that is only available in, in the Python SDK when you run this in, in Dataflow, right? If you are running, um, if you were trying to run this in any other runner like Flink, uh, you you will be able to actually do the other way around. So you have a Java SDK. So I will do a, a, a Maven build or something here, or actually execute indirectly the, the Java uh, module. Uh, and that will call the Python components, right? Like TensorFlow or whatever we have. But that's not at the moment available in Dataflow. That's available with the other runners. Uh, hopefully in the next few quarters, we'll have that also implemented in our, in our runner version two. But my point here is that to make that run, we need to ensure that we are using the, the runner version two in Dataflow, right? Only available for Python. Okay, we submit. And you will see that now we will generate a bunch of uh, logs here. Okay. 
okay, that's basically calling the API service, the data flow service, and then we'll start, we're compiling and bringing all the JDK, JDK uh, sorry, the Java uh, dependencies in this case, the Kafka dependencies, you see is bringing all these things. <coughs> Okay, and at some point in time, it will start staging all these uh, objects, okay? Now it's packing everything and should start any moment pushing, okay, and twice. That's when it's pushing to GCS, it's asking me for that. Okay, you see now it's, uh, it's uh, staging everything, okay? So it's pushing components, okay, quite a few. Nice, and then after that, if I refresh here, I should be able to see, yep, okay, I have my new job running here. Nice, so it takes a couple of minutes, um, but basically it will just take about two minutes to start all the workers, five workers, as I indicated. You can see that the version I'm using is in Python 3.7 SDK, is Apache Beam 2.28, right? Which is supported in, in Dataflow uh, and Central one as I specified. Now, I, I will need to wait a couple of minutes to actually see actual results. We can wait anyway, because we have time. Uh, but you can see here the, the DAG that we created, right? <clears throat> Basically what we're doing is, as I describe it, we first read from PubSub, right? There is actually a IO, a PubSub IO available uh, in Python, so, but we also have, uh, uh, what we also need is right into um, Kafka, right? And we don't have a Kafka IO in Python. What we have is the wrapper that the Kafka, that we have the Kafka IO in uh, from the Java SDK, right? So that's the beauty about this. We don't need to re-implement the whole Kafka IO that was already implemented in, in Java and has been already battle tested. That's another nice feature because when you introduce new code, obviously you might introduce new uh, bags, right? So if you can actually use a battle tested uh, connector that is being used um, heavily, like the Java, uh, like the Kafka IO, that's a really nice uh, feature, right? So basically we can see here from the from the DAG that we are reading from PubSub, we're doing transformation, we're doing the windowing, okay, at 15 seconds, and then we write into Kafka. The same pipeline, <clears throat> we have another part of the pipeline and where we're doing is we read from Kafka, and then we do a flat map and we generate the logs, right? So hopefully at some point in time, I should be start seeing uh, events coming through, right? And as I mentioned, it takes a few minutes, but at some point in time, I should be able to see a big chunk of uh, events being read from PubSub and, and being written into Kafka. Okay, let's see. Nothing yet. It's running, but sometimes it takes a bit of time to start refreshing the UI anyway. So hopefully at some point in time, when I click on that stage, which is the one that is um, generating the locks, we'll start seeing coordinates that they, they come originally from the taxi trips that we are publishing on the, um, on the PAPS app topic, okay? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Okay, a few more seconds, hopefully. That's the thing about trying things live. <laughs> it takes a bit of time. Basically what I will do, obviously now there are not events arriving, but what I will do is I will go, Obviously, if you were running this in a different runner, you will have to go through the different UI or going low level and trying to look through the logs, right? Here we have everything from the UI, so I can go here and I can even uh, see the logs that are being generated on that stage, right? At the moment, there is nothing, so let's go back. And again, see here, when I was testing events, And then as always, Murphy's Law is waiting a bit of time. Okay. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. What I can do in the meantime, I will come back to this one, uh, but let's see the other ones that I just run uh, for a few minutes, right? They should just start at any moment, but just for the benefit of time, I don't want to keep you waiting. Uh, I can go here with the one I just run a couple of hours ago. And if I go here, you see that um, that's the nice uh, login that I, uh, I have that method that is outputting these things. So you see that I was generating them, right? A couple of hours ago, that's local time here. Uh, so it's actually working, right? So that's the whole thing here. Let's go back again to this one and see hopefully now it's generating events. No, it's not. <laughs> that's always the more of his loo. Okay, that's why it's good to have other runs somewhere you have seen the the events uh, coming. I promise you that was working. It's just a matter of when we get new events. Okay, I think now we should have something. No, not yet. Okay, let's give it another few seconds and otherwise, what I will do is I will switch back to the deck and then we can finish and then hopefully cover any questions you may have. But as you can see here from the the one that I just ran a few uh, hours ago, it was running, it was okay. So that's almost much in the same time. So hopefully I should start seeing events coming through, but again, it takes its time. Okay. Unfortunately, that's taking a bit longer than I expected. But you can see anyway the, the other one where we could see the, the events coming, right? So, okay, that's all I wanted to show you. Uh, let me, yeah, I will keep it running and then maybe I'll have a look later. <laughs>